Hi Flosstube, welcome back. I am Jennifer, the Whistle Stop Stitcher, coming to you from the Whistle Stop Quilt Retreat. Um, for those of you that are brand new, thank you for stopping by. And for those of you that are coming back, welcome back. I'm glad you um, come back to watch some more of my videos. Um, so today is an exciting day. I am filming in the sewing room here at the Whistle Stop. Um, and you can see behind me some of the tables um, and two very beautiful quilts. Um, and so I'll show the rest of the sewing room and I'm also gonna show you guys sort of like the gathering area where people sit and eat as well as the kitchen because this is all kind of in the same area here. So this is the um, sort of the big um, most um, important part of the house. This is why everybody comes here is the sewing room. Um, and so you can see those two quilts behind me. The beautiful flowered one belongs to the previous owner. It will be going with her um, in the next month or two. And so I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna put there in its place because that one is just so beautiful that I'm not sure that anything I currently have measures up to that one. Um, I have an idea of a quilt to make to replace it, um, but I just barely started cutting the fabric and it's one of those that's probably gonna take me like a year to make and so, I don't think that one will be ready in time. So I'm trying to figure out what to put there. So I don't know, we'll figure it out. And then this one over here, this is really awesome. There is a woman that's in my local quilt guild who is a very well-known quilt historian. She's written some books um, on the subject and she speaks at events and um, about the history of quilts. And so she has a huge collection of vintage quilts. And so she knows that we purchased the Whistle Stop. And, and so one day she showed up at our guild meeting with this quilt and it's a vintage quilt. And she said, you know what, I don't know if you can use it, but if this is something you can use over at the Whistle Stop, then um, I'd love to give it to you. And so, of course, I was like, heck yeah, I'll take it. It's beautiful. Um, and so it's very cool. It's an old um, vintage quilt. I'm not sure when it was made. She doesn't know either. She didn't know the history of it. It had been given to her by, I think, another quilt collector. Um, but it just fits in perfectly in this room. Um, and you'll see when I show you around a little bit at the end that the colors of it and the style are, are just a perfect match for this room and this area of the house. So I was very grateful to her for um, giving that to us. And so now we've got that hanging in here. Um, so this is a really, this is my favorite part of the whole house is the whole reason why people want to come here, sit and sew and have fun. Um, so I'll just give you guys a tour at the end of the video, like I usually do. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, otherwise, let me think about, I, I made a list today so that I made sure I didn't forget anything as I moved through the, the video. So, okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna start with some shout outs to some other floss tubers. Um, and so I realized as I was sort of going back through my old videos that I don't think I've ever really talked about um, who I enjoy watching, um, the floss tubers that, that I like to follow. And so today I figured I'd sort of go through and, and name a couple um, of the ones that I enjoy watching. And so this is not, everyone. I, I watch tons and tons of floss tube. Um, so there's others out there too, and I'll try to remember to, you know, mention them as the weeks go on. Um, but this is the list that I could come up with as I was sitting here this morning getting ready. Um, and so these are some of my favorite floss tubers. And so uh, most of them you've probably already heard of. And if you haven't, then go check them out. Um, so the first one is Julie over at Gulf Coast Stitcher. So she's awesome. Um, and she just announced this week that she's starting her own online needle workshops at um, gulfcoaststitches.com. So that is very cool. And she's super sweet. And so I love to watch her videos. So go check her out. Um, another one is Tiffany at Tiffin Stitches. I think I've mentioned her before. Um, she's got some really cute projects. Um, and she's a very good enabler when it comes to things like floss and patterns and stuff like that. So I have fun watching her videos. Um, so go check her out. Um, of course, these others I've mentioned several times, Pam and Steph at Just Keep Stitching. I eagerly await their videos every week. And as soon as I see them pop up, I go and watch them because they are hilarious and I super enjoy watching their videos. So Pam and Steph, if you're out there, I love you guys. Um, you're hilarious. Um, Priscilla and Chelsea, Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, I've mentioned them several times as well. I also eagerly await their videos and as soon as I see them pop up on Saturday morning, I have to sit down and watch them. I was actually watching their latest video a few minutes ago right before I got started, but I didn't get a chance to finish. So I'll have that waiting for me when I'm done today. And so they're fabulous and Priscilla always has like the best finishing ideas, like she's so creative. So, um, so go over there and watch their videos if you haven't already. 
Um, Yvonne, the Night Owl Stitcher, of course, she's super sweet. I love her videos. I love um, the projects she chooses to make. And so um, a lot of her things I think are actually similar to some like the Prairie Schoolers and stuff that I enjoy. So I always like watching her videos. Of course, Michelle at Bendy Stitchy, just like the sweetest person ever. And that just comes across in her videos. And so I love to watch her. And this last week, her video, um, she showed like two very cool projects that she's worked. One is like a Frida and the other one is the Garden of Erie. Um, and they were amazing. So go check those out. Um, Emily at Eclectic Possessions. I love her videos too. She has some of the cutest cats ever and they make appearances in her videos. <laughs> so uh, I always enjoy that. Um, and she does a lot of really cute like samplers and like one, a couple she's working on right now um, that are like right up my alley. Um, and so I love to watch her videos. Um, and then of course, Vanna, the Twisted Stitcher. Um, she has uh, amazing stuff. She's an amazing finisher. And she has all kinds of tutorials and stuff and she just seems like she's a wonderful person and so I really love to um, watch her videos as well and then the last one I'll mention she's a new floss tuber uh, Melissa at the cupcake stitcher um, and I really enjoy her videos and seeing her projects because some of hers I think are a little bit different style than what I would normally stitch but I love to watch um, them and see you know the different things that are out there um, and so I really enjoyed her videos so far so that's the list that I've got um, so those are the ones that I could think of off the top of my head as I was sitting here a few minutes ago getting ready um, to make this video. So there's more out there. I know I've forgotten some people, so please don't be mad. Um, but as I think of them in future videos, I'll make sure to call them out as well. Um, so if you haven't watched some of those ladies, go check them out. They're really awesome. So next, what's been going on since last week? Um, I've been doing some stitching. I've only made progress on the same two projects that I showed last week. So I will show those again um, here in a couple of minutes when I show off my whips. Um, so I've been enjoying working on those two. Um, I've also been doing a lot of reading. Um, I love to read. I like love to obsessively read. Um, I think last year I read close to 100 books or something like that. Um, and so I read every chance that I get. I read while I'm sitting at the table eating dinner, which my husband and kids don't like because I ignore them sometimes. <laughs> you know, if I'm stopped for like five minutes waiting in the car somewhere, I read on my phone. Um, if I'm like taking a lunch break at work, sometimes I read on my phone. You know, I'm at my daughter's Girl Scout meetings, I read on the phone. So, you know, I use my Kindle app and I just read, read, read constantly. And so I finished two books this week. Um, so the first was City of Mirrors by Justin Cronin. Um, and this is the final book in a trilogy that started with The Passage. Um, the, the Passage was the first book. The second book was called The Twelve. And the third book is City of Mirrors. And I just finished. And sort of, it's like a post-apocalyptic sort of vampire slash virus crazy storyline. And they are huge books, amazingly detailed. But they are fantastic. And so I've really enjoyed reading them. The first one came out in like 2010. And so I read that one and then I had to wait for the second one to come out. And I read that one and then I had to wait for the second one to come out. And then I had to, I was on the hold list from the library forever. So it's, you know, been a long time and it's, they're, they're very dense. And so it's not ideal to wait years in between <laughs> reading the, the books. So if you're someone who hasn't read that series and that sounds like it's something you'd be interested in, now is a great time to do it because you could read all three of them right in a row uh, and you won't have the years of forgetting details in between like I did. But those are amazing. Um, I loved them and so they were great. So I just finished the third one this week. And then the other book that I read this week, which was highly entertaining, was Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, I think it is. And so that's been made into a movie. And I don't, honestly, I don't know if the movie's been released yet or if it's going to be released soon, but I saw the previews for it and it looked entertaining. Um, but I just finished the book this week. And so if you are a child of the 80s, if you grew up in the 80s like I did and you played video games, this book will... Um, you'll enjoy it. And so even if you're not a huge game, I'm not a huge gamer. I don't play video games now, but I, you know, I had a Nintendo as a kid and stuff. So there's a lot of references in this book that you will enjoy. Um, and it was just, it was just fun, super fun, um, sort of set in the future, um, virtual reality, this sort of game that's underway where um, these kids are um, playing this game. And it's, it's really, really entertaining. So I would recommend that one as well. Um, and so now I need to go see the movie because I really, really enjoyed the book. And so I need to go watch that movie, but I don't know if it's out yet or not, but I'll have to figure that out. 
So anyway, so that's what I spent um, some of my time this week doing was reading. Um, and so I just thought I'd share that with you. I always enjoy um, getting book recommendations from others in FlossTube or wherever. So, cause I'm always looking for a good book to read. So, um, so those are two that I would recommend. So next, um, oh, and I just started a new book this morning. Um, it's called A Court, what is it? A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah Moss. And I know this is one that's been popular amongst like my circle of quilter friends and people I follow like on Instagram. Um, and it's kind of outside of my normal, it's like one of those, it's like fantastic sort of like fairies and immortal realm and weird stuff like that. Like that's not usually my cup of tea, but you know, I've heard a lot of people like it. I keep seeing it around. And so I was like, eh, I'll give it a try. So I started the first book this morning. I've only gotten in like 10 pages or something. And so far it's pretty good. So I'm enjoying it. But like I said, I'm like only on the first chapter. So we'll see where it goes. But I've got actually all three of the books checked out to me right now from the library. Um, they all, all the holds popped up at the same time. So maybe I can hurry up and speed through them all um, quickly while I've got them all. So that's what's up next for reading. Um, okay, so I think I'm at the point where I will talk about my whips. Um, and so like I mentioned, they're the same ones that I've been working on. Um, so the first one is, you know, the Halloween Tingles by Lizzie Kate. Um, and I'm just still working on the first section. And that is the Ghosties and Ghoulies. And, oh gosh, I have to put something by that you can see the window. All right, there we go. Put my arm back there. So there's where I'm at. I'm almost done. I really honestly just have to finish the witch's dress and then like a little bit, like a handle over here. And then there's this little owl up here that I haven't finished yet. So I'm really close to finishing this first section and it's just super cute. And I actually think this section is taking longer because there's so many different colors and like little sections and I'm having to keep change threads. Um, but it's really cute. And so I'm looking forward to finishing this one up maybe this weekend and then moving on to the next one. And I changed out my needle minder. I had that Christmas one on there and it just bothered me. So now I have this one that says meh, which is kind of like a sort of constant feeling in life. <laughs> so I added that one to there. So that's cool. And, oh gosh, the window and the lighting in here is gonna make things a little bit weird. So I apologize for that. So the next one, is again old white farmhouse sampler from Stacy Nash Primitives. So there's that. And I made a little bit of progress this week. So there we go. So I started working on the house. And I think this is supposed to be a goat. <laughs> So I've got him all done, except I'm missing one leg right here. I ran into thread last night and it was late, so I just went ahead and put it down. So that's where I'm at on that one. So I've made some progress on this one too. That's it. That's all I got. That's all the stitching I did this week. So hopefully I'll get to um, do some more soon. Maybe when I'm, when I'm done with this video, I gotta go make beds again. So we had a retreat in the house this week checked out on Thursday. So now it's Saturday, I guess it's Saturday afternoon now actually. Um, and so when I'm done with this video, I'm gonna go make all the beds. Kevin is outside with our new tractor. He's across the street on the other half of the property, cutting away a, a bigger hole in the like pavilion building we have over there, which is where he's gonna keep his tractor, but his tractor is too tall to fit under the doorway. So he's over there doing something, cutting the doorway opening wider and then he's gonna mow I think and do some other stuff so he's outside doing tractor farm work but anyway so there's that um so the rest of what I have today is haul and I was going to talk about a couple of stitch alongs that I'm going to be participating in but actually before I do that I want to show you one thing so a few weeks ago I showed you guys this pair of scissors that I had gotten at I think I got them at Dixie Darling in Pigeon Forge when I was there a few weeks ago. So this little pair of scissors, I just got them because they were cute and they were up by the counter. 
This is the most amazing pair of scissors, people. Like if you see one of these, get it. So I love the fact that it has this rubbery tip on the scissors that's attached right here, which I didn't realize the last time I showed it to you guys. So you just stretch it and pull it off and it hangs there. And these are the sharpest little scissors I've ever had, like super sharp. And they will snip anything perfectly. And then when you're done, you just stretch your little thing and put it back on. They are amazing. I mean, really. So next time I go back there, I'm gonna buy like five more pairs <laughs> because I'm gonna put one in every like bag, project bag with every whip because they're just so easy and light and, and they're fantastic. Like they're super fantastic. So I just wanted to sort of highlight that because those are an amazing find I didn't realize were as amazing as they are when I bought them. So, okay, haul. I have a few things to show you. So the first thing is, there is, I believe, a stitch along going on for this. And I saw this pattern. Um, Julie talk, has talked about it. Tiffany's talked about it. And I love this, you guys. It's the Prairie Life Sampler by Heartstring Samplery. It's like Little House on the Prairie. You guys, I was obsessed with Little House on the Prairie when I was a kid. I loved that show. I used to watch it all the time and I loved the books. Like I read those books so many times as a kid. And so I was like obsessed with Laura Ingalls Wilder. I'm such a nerd. I still am, but that's okay. So I absolutely love this sampler. And so I'm gonna start stitching this and participating in that stitch along. Um, I just need floss and I need fabric. I don't have either one. So I actually um, was trying to figure out if I could kit this up with like the Victorian Motto sampler threads. So I asked Nancy to, if she had a, like a DMC conversion chart, because this is, um, it calls for Weeks Dye Works and then it has the DMC conversions. So I asked her if she had like a DMC conversion list for her, um, you know, Victorian Motto threads and she does, so she sent it to me. And so I went through the list and using the DMC conversions that are in the pattern, then I looked those up on Nancy's list and found the threads that she has that match those colors. Now, there wasn't a conversion for every single one of the threads on this pattern. It was maybe half. So I actually placed an order with her that will hopefully be coming with my monthly threads this week. Um, so I ordered like the half of them that I could figure out a conversion for. And so when I get those, then I'll try them out and see if they look okay. And also I will, um, for the rest of them, I think I'll just pull out the DMC that it says is called for and, or look at the pictures of the weeks that are called for and then try to figure out if I've got other stuff in my stash that will work for it. Whether it's other weeks or it's, you know, gassed or, you know, classic color works or some of the Victorian motto. I've already got, you know, a dozen or so of those. I'm getting another 12 in my monthly shipment this week, as well as, you know, another 10 or so that I ordered after doing the conversion. So amongst all of those, maybe I'll have enough to call use all of those with this. And then I just need to get fabric. So I'm on the hunt. It calls for R&R Reproductions 35 Count Classic Homespun. I'm not sure about that. I think I might do like vintage meadow rue or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, so I don't have any fabric that's large enough. I don't think. Well, no, this I might have something large enough for this. I need to look at my stash. I think I'm getting myself confused with this one and the other one I'm going to show you next. But anyway, so I want to start this soon. The next thing that I got, this is, I saw this. I don't know if this came out at... Nashville little you know the market or if this was already out for a while but this is hands across the sea sampler and it's Amy can 1831 and this thing is just I mean it's gorgeous I love this so much isn't that beautiful and so I did the same thing with the threads this one is calls for silks um, I priced them out it was like $200 
can't do that. As much as I'd love to try silk, I can't do that. So it also has the DMC conversion. So the same thing, I took the DMC list and matched it up um, against Nancy's threads and ordered the ones that there was a conversion for, um, again, to try out. Um, but I couldn't get all of them. So again, I'll have to figure out, um, you know, I'll hunt through my stash and see what else I've got that might work for the rest of them. But I think this is the one that calls for vintage meadow rue, I think is the called for. Yeah, it is. Lakeside, 40 count lakeside linen, vintage meadow rue. So I think this is the one that I've been looking, trying to find a big enough piece. I'm gonna need like a half yard uh, because the design is pretty large. It's 307 stitches wide by 276 sti stitches high. So with a three inch margin on 40 count, I still need like 22 inches by 20 inches piece of fabric. So I'm gonna to have to get like a half yard. But isn't that beautiful? I love it so much. So I'm gonna start that one. And these patterns are amazing. I mean, they're super nice, detailed color. I'll just show you real quickly. Like that was like 1 12th of the pattern. They're just really, really nice quality um, patterns. And so then that brings me to, sorry, I just kicked the tripod. Um, so Julia Gulf Coast Stitcher is gonna be hosting the Eliza Bellcox um, sampler stitch along, which is also hands across the sea. And so I was trying to resist. I was like, oh no, cause I had already thought about buying this one when then she started talking about the other. And I was like, no, I don't need two of these. They're, I'll probably never finish them anyways. <laughs> They're so large. Um, I don't have a good track record when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, so I was like, no, 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 no. Well, I finally gave in. And so then when she started talking about Nancy having thread packs and fabric, so I was like, okay, just take my money. So I emailed Nancy and I ordered the thread pack and I ordered the fabric that she's going to dye especially for it, um, for the Eliza Bell Cox. And then I, Julie will have them back in her um, shop later this week and so I'm gonna wait until she gets those back on stock and then I'm gonna order one from her and so I will be all ready when the time comes I think June 1st the stitch along is starting so I will be ready for that and then maybe in the meantime I'll work on this one because it's just beautiful so there's that um, okay so I've got a few other things that I purchased as well sorry my coffee from the local donut shop I had an amazing apple fritter for breakfast today. <laughs> um, okay, so I got this in a D stash, stash unload. Little House Needleworks, the gathering room. And you'll see when I give you a tour here at the end that this sort of in-between area here in the house that's between the sewing room and the kitchen, there's already two signs in there that say the gathering room where the tables are for people to sit and eat. And so I was like, well, how perfect is that? So I can stitch this up and hang it in that area. So it's really cute. So I got that in a D-stash. Okay, and then this next pattern, I love this. So I've said before a few times that I'm not normally like a big fan of Halloween. I mean, I like Halloween just as much as the next person. Um, but I'm not real big into like Halloween stitching. I never really thought much about it. But with the um, Bewitch Stitches group that I'm a part of and their Edgar Allan Poe, um, the... EAP macabre sal that's been going on and seeing all this Halloween stuff. I'm like, okay, some of this stuff is really cute And then I keep seeing these really cute Halloween patterns and I'm like, okay I need to stitch some of this stuff. So I was you know trolling along in stash unload or One of those stash unload groups and I saw this and I was like, holy cow That is an amazing pattern and I'd never even heard of it before um, but it is super amazing and then I think that Is it Steph? Uh, just keep stitching mentioned somebody having stitched like some kind of a Halloween haunted house that she saw at Stitch Away or something like that. I think she may have been referring to this same pattern. I could be wrong, but this is amazing. Look at this. It's Praiseworthy Stitches, Widow Black's B and B. And look at that pat look at the detail. I love this so much. It's amazing. I want to stitch it like exactly like it is on the cover but this thing is huge so it's not readily apparent but it is gigantic 
It's 347 stitches wide by 252 stitches high. So on a 40 count, the finished stitching, just the design itself is 17 and a quarter by 12 and a half inches, which is huge. So, and I don't think I'm gonna stitch this on 40 count, maybe like 32 count, like an even weave maybe. And then the finish size is 21 and 5 eighths inches by 15 and 3 quarter inches. That's huge. This will take me like 10 years to finish, but I just love it. And it's on, um, let's see here, I think it's murky. 30, yeah, it's stitched on 32 count murky from Picture This Plus with two strands of floss from Weeks Dye Works, Gentle Art, and then a metallic DMC. And then there's Mill Hill seed beads and Jabco buttons. And you can still get the button pack. I think you can still buy this pattern from 123 Stitch. I think I saw it on there. And they sell the button pack and all the beads. So I need to get those because this is just so cute. I mean, come on. Look at that. There's like the little carriage and there's like little ghosts and like people peeking out of the windows I mean come on that is fantastic I love it there's like a cat sneaking in the window here like his little tail sticking out how cute I love it so I will hopefully start this at some point in time I'll probably finish it when I'm like 80 if I finish it at all that's humongous but whatever, it's cute. So there's that one. And then, so I know I showed a few weeks ago some of these, I bought one of these quilt sampler patterns at Dixie Darlin. They had a whole wall of them stitched up and they were really beautiful. Like they were way more beautiful in person than they look in the picture on the front of the pattern. It does not do it justice. So somebody had a couple of them in a D stash. And so I was like, yeah, why not? This one is called Country Christmas Blocks Quilt Sampler 9. That one. And then I like this one, which is Jane A. Stickles Civil War Era Blocks Quilt Sampler 6. And so this is based on the um, the Civil War um, quilt pattern. Gosh, what's it called? Jane. I can't remember. <laughs> I am having a senior moment. I don't know. Jane. What's it called? You know what I'm talking. If you're a quilter, you know what I'm talking about. That Civil War quilt that's Jane something, um, with all the little points around the edge like this, and then all the little teeny tiny like six inch blocks in the middle. We all have that pattern, but none of us are very few <laughs> have finished it. Um, anyway, so that one was pretty. And then I have, this one is a Cricut collection. I, this is super cute. I think Steph again showed this in her la their last video, Just Keep Stitching. But the acorn, acorn autumn. I just really like that. I love the way the variegation is in the sample that's on the front of the pattern. So that'll be cute for fall. And then last thing that I have um, for haul is one, only one prairie schooler this week, you guys. I would say that I'm exercising more restraint, but the fact is that there's several of them in the mail on their way to me, so it's not true at all. So This one is Holly Days. I love these like fat Santas, these little fat snowmen. How cute is that? Cute, look at Santa sledding. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's hilarious. So cute. So there's that one. So add it to my Prairie Schooler list. And this one's cardstock, which is nice. So, very cool. So that's it. That's the last piece of haul I have. Um, so, what else is going on? I don't think there is anything else. Like I said, I think I will be doing some more stitching coming up. Um, I've got to go make all the beds, but once I'm done making the beds, I have a feeling that my husband is going to take a little bit longer to get his stuff done than what I have to get done because he's got to do all that work outside. And so if I finish and he's still working, I'm going to sit and stitch. Oh, so that'll be fun. 
tomorrow is Easter, and so I will be um, we'll be celebrating with the kids, and I'm sure we'll be doing an early morning Easter egg hunt, looking for the eggs that the Easter Bunny leaves in our backyard. Um, and then other than that, I think it'll be a lazy day. We'll just sit around and maybe, I think my mother-in-law might have plans to make dinner or something. They live next door, so we'll just walk over and have dinner if that's the case. Um, but otherwise, I don't think there's much else going on. Um, and so hopefully I'll get some time in stitching, um, and then have a nice relaxing week ahead. It's never relaxing. You know how it is when you have kids in a full-time job and you run a business and it's, there's it's, there's never a relaxing day so we'll see how it goes but anyway um this video is going to end up way too long at this point because it's like we're already at 31 minutes and i still haven't even shown given you a tour which is going to take a, at least a couple minutes because i got to show you the whole sewing room plus the kitchen and gathering room um, so I better get on with that. So thank you for coming by. Um, I really appreciate everyone that stops by and watches my videos and likes my videos or follows me on Instagram or sends me a comment. I love to get, you guys would not, <laughs> you don't even know how excited I get every time I, it pops up on my phone and says that I've got a comment on my video. I'm like, yay. Um, I really love that. So um, if you are interested in learning more about the Whistle Stop, um, you can go to our website, whistlestopquiltretreat.com, or you can follow us on Facebook, Whistle Stop Quilt Retreat. It's the name of our page. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I post um, more pictures of my stitching and my kids and quilting and all that good stuff. Um, I am Jennifer LGB on Instagram, so come and check me out. Um, otherwise, thanks for coming, and I'll see you again next week, hopefully but stay tuned for a tour. Thanks guys, bye. All right everyone, welcome back. This is my tour of the sewing room here at the Whistle Stop Quilt Retreat. As you can see, is a nice big room. And so I am just this side of that door goes down the hall towards the front door so you'll be able to kind of orient yourselves and see where I'm at and I'll come back this way um, in a few minutes and so you can see there's the front door down the hall this is the gathering area which I will come back to in just a minute this actually used to be the old external porch of the, for of the farmhouse or like back of the house and so now we're inside and here is the sewing room. So you have to go down a couple of steps, but we've got 14 sewing stations. Actually, I see a chair. This chair is supposed to be <laughs> around the corner here. There we go. And so, ooh, I just bumped into our cutting table. So you've got three stations there. You've got two tall ironing stations, which are very nice. We have two tall cutting stations that are up on risers to make it easier to cut your fabric, which is very helpful. We've got seven more stations over there, and then four more over here in the corner. And oh, hey, there's hubby with this tractor. I don't know what he's doing out there, but something's going on. All right, so here's the gorgeous quilt that hangs in here that will be sadly leaving us, but that's okay. I know that Jody loves this quilt, so she's going to take it with her, and she I don't blame her one bit. And so here is the vintage quilt that my friend um, gave to us. Isn't that fun? I just love it. And so, here's looking back towards the kitchen and the gathering room. See, we're in Sweetwater, Tennessee. There's the steps leading up into that part of the house. That door through there is a bathroom. That's actually the bathroom of the Lincoln bedroom. Then these are the doors that head outside. We have this nice Grand Central Station sign. That's what we call it, the sewing room. And so this is like a breezeway where you can kind of dirty, it's been raining and stuff. But, so you can head out to the yard 
that way. Or you can walk across into our sunroom. Oh, I hear something coming. Hang on one sec. Okay, sorry about that. Back, that was the husband coming in needing tools and screws and various things so he could continue what he's doing. So that is our sunroom. I would go out there and show it to you, but it's locked up and I don't have the keys within E to Z reach, so I'll just show it to you through the door. Maybe I'll, I'll show it in another video. Um, so then we have this little breezeway, little fake owl to try to keep the animals out even though it doesn't work because we have a groundhog that is living under this porch here and he likes to waddle out under the stairs over there. Anyway, so back to the sewing room. We have some cool stuff in here. These are like old quilt blocks that have been turned in, you know, put in embroidery hoops and hung on the wall, which is fun. Picture of a train. Some more train photos. I don't know how I got zoomed in. Sorry about that, guys. And then over here we have a wood burning stove that we do not use because this is an old house and we don't want to burn the place down. <laughs> but it is pretty cool. Um, a few little stitched items over here. A cute little pillow on the chair. This little stitched like goose or something duck. And this. And our whistle stop sign over there. All right. So I will now take you up this way. So this here to the left is where we come in. This is like the side entrance. Out there is where everybody parks. And so you come up this, in this door, up these stairs, and you're in sort of the gathering room. And over here we've got one of our several antique sewing machines. We've got some cute little decorations over here. You can see the quilt block on the smokehouse outside. See the gathering room. And we have this very cool quilt over here. It's, I'm too close for you to be able to see the whole thing. Let me pick up a little a quilt hanging there at the entrance. And another vintage sewing machine that I found in an antique store recently. And look at this cool thing to hold our keys. We added that recently. Isn't that fun? We got it at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Another cute quilt. And an extra table for more seating. That door through there goes to the utility room that's attached to our private bedroom. That's where we keep all the boring stuff like cleaning supplies. So I'm not gonna show you that. But here's the eating area. This is a table, a little seat six. Some cute stuff on the wall. Clock, some rug hooking. And over here, another table where a couple more people can sit. That goes through to, there's it says, the gathering room. And look at the distressed painting on what was the outside of the house. Isn't that cool? And so here is our kitchen, our blackboard with the train. Isn't that cute? I love this kitchen, you guys. It is amazing farmhouse kitchen. So there's the side door to the house that goes out on our side porch. Look at the old fireplace. Doesn't work anymore, but this big old fireplace with the like painted brick or stone her hearth. We've got some things we've put up on the shelves. 
There's our ovens. And you can see this over here. So this place used to be called Brookside Farm. And you can see somebody, I don't know who made this. turn around so you can see the rest of the kitchen look at the ceiling and there's the cabinets dishwasher and the island with the cooktop goodness cars just keep driving by it's very noisy sorry about that and so through this doorway over here where there's that curtain is our private bedroom. I'm not going to show you that. There's nothing very interesting in there. We have this cute shelf here with fun stuff on it. Some vintage things. But there's just so many little cute details in here. So that goes out to the porch and then you can see the pavilion across the way where my husband's trying to do some work to fit his tractor inside of that little building right there. And then over here, last part of the kitchen is the pantry inside this little room. And so this used to go through, so behind this wall, it used to go straight through into what is the bathroom of the old glory bedroom. And that was like the pass-through pantry into the old glory bedroom, which used to be the dining room of the house. So you'd go through here, through that way, and then out into what was the original dining room. So there is that. So there is my farmhouse kitchen here at the Whistle Stop. If you come and stay here, you've got everything you need to cook all of your meals. It's very homey and comfortable. And so heading back here so you can see. So here's the eating area, sewing room through there. And then back this way, hallway, down to the front door. So the old glory bedroom's the first door on the left. The Lincoln bedroom is down on the right. And then down there next to the staircase to the left is the parlor. And then to the right around the bottom of the staircase is the Shiloh bedroom. And then up the stairs are the garden and attic bedrooms that I showed you guys before, just to give you a feel for where we're at. So that is it. This was a very long video, but I hope you've enjoyed seeing my very favorite part of the whole farmhouse. It's fun. It's very comfortable and very well set up for having a nice retreat. So I think that's it for today. I thank you all for joining me. Um, next week, I'm not sure where I'll be next week since I've given you pretty much a tour of everything. Maybe I'll just be in a random spot next week and maybe I'll show you around a little bit outside. Um, once my husband's had a chance to mow the grass, it's getting a little wild out there. <laughs> but thanks for coming. Um, I really appreciate all of you guys and I will see you next time. Bye.